desire, decision, and determination. And I want you to open your Bibles to John 5, 6. I'm going to start off there this morning, amen. Lord, I just thank you this morning, Father. God, I thank you for the word, Father, God. I just thank you, Father God, that this morning you would just speak through me, Father God, that you would declare, Father God, the word, Father God, that you put in my heart to release this morning, Father God, for those that are here and those that are watching online, Father God, I thank you that your word will go forth and it will, Father God, touch the hearts, Father God, of your people in Jesus' name. As John 5, 6, amen. But before I start there, you know what? We have to understand something that we, and I read this on Facebook the other day, but it, it caught my attention. We were created for the impossible. We have to understand that whatever adversity we go through or whatever the enemy throws at us, we can still overcome. But it has to be our decision to overcome. It has to be our desire, and we have to be determined to overcome every hurdle. How many say amen to that, right? And how many of us have been through adversity? How many have struggled? How many of us have been hurt or been in pain or, or dealt with something, right? See, all of that there, we have to understand that's a plan of the enemy to keep you or to get you out of the race. The only way we'll lose is if we quit. I want you to think about this for a minute. We're, we're going and, we're, and we're, we're following Christ, right? And even if we have to drag ourselves to the finish line, do it. But don't stop. If you get knocked down, get back up. You know, and I, I always reference this. My wife, she's probably know I'm going to go with this here. But, you know, one of my favorite movies is Rocky, man. I like that show. I like that movie. See, he went through... He, that place he came out of, and he has adversity after adversity, right? And nobody's seen anything in him. But see, what was in him was greater than the opposition that was against him. See, they seen him as a nobody, right? They seen him, oh, he'll never make it. But he got a shot, and he took that shot. See, we have a shot today. We have a shot this morning to be overcomers, to be warriors for Christ, to be more than conquerors for Christ, right? But it has to be our desire, our decision, and we have to be determined that whatever comes along, we will have, be victorious. We will overcome. And we have to understand something, that everything that comes against us, everything that the enemy throws at us, will not defeat us if we don't give up. But we come back to the question, are we desiring to be overcomers? Amen. And look, before I, before I read a scripture, this is what desire means. A strong feeling of wanting to have something or for something to happen. It means a yearning, a longing for, or even a craving or a hunger for something. How many of us here are, de- everybody here is desiring something. Whether in the natural or in the spirit, we're all longing, we're hungering for something, for the more. But the way we spend our time and the way way we talk has to line up with that which we're craving for or hungering after. My prayer was always, Lord, I want more of you, Father God. I want great revelation. Lord, I want to be able to speak and I want to be able to do all these things here. Okay, but what are you doing to get there? My hunger was to be everything God designed me to be. See, I don't want to, I don't want, I don't want to left nothing unturned when it comes to the kingdom of God. If God said I can have it, Terry, I want it. See, and but I mean that in every aspect. That's in my finances with my children and our marriage and our ministry, everything. If God said, I can have that, or if he says, I've called you to do that, guess what? I want that. I want to walk in that. But see, my desire has to be so hung, so great, and so wanting that right there that I chase after it without any doubt. 
See, I have to yearn. I have to long for that. I long to be everything God called me to to be. I hunger for more revelation. I hunger for everything that God wants to deposit in my spirit. I hunger for that. I want that. But my lifestyle has to has to say that. Has to be speaking that. See, and and for me back then when I when I did that, I wanted all these things, but I wasn't living a lifestyle that was saying I want that. See, I was sitting on the couch. This is me now. I was sitting on the couch and expecting one day for God to come in and just, boom, his revelation. But see, God taught me one thing. He says, revelation comes out of relationship. See, I get to know the one that loves me. I get to know the one that I love by spending time, by having a relationship with them. I, have, I long to be in the presence of God. I crave, my spirit man craves for more of God, for the glory of God. Now, why is that? Because that's what we're called to do, to live in the glory, to live in, in, in the place of, of heaven with God. We were called, amen, to, to live in the place of worship, an uh, atmosphere of worship. But we have to desire that. We have to long for that. Amen. Look, let's go to uh, John here real quick. John 5, verses 6 through 7. I'm going to start in verse 5. It says, there was a certain man who had suffered with a deep-seated ish and lingering disorder for 38 years. Does anybody here that's dealt with some stuff for years? Amen. Verse 6, when Jesus noticed him lying, they're helpless. I'm reading that Amplified here, okay? When Jesus noticed him lying there helpless, knowing that he had already been there time, that he had been there a long time in that condition, he said to him, do you want to become well? Are you really in earnest about getting well? The invalid answered, sir, sir, I have nobody when the water is moving to put me in the pool, but while I was trying to come in, into it myself, somebody else steps down ahead of me. See, verse 7 and verse 6 is the bottom part that says, Jesus asked him, but do you really want to be made well? Now, that seems almost like a crazy question, right? He says, God, he's been there for 38 years, 38 years dealing with something. It's like when you come to service and you, and you want breakthrough, something's going on in your life, and God says, wait a minute, do you want me to take care of that? It's like, well, duh, yeah. He says, no, it's not what he's asking. He said, are you? Are you really serious about getting rid of this thing? In other words, if you're desiring this thing, then your lifestyle needs to align and say, you know what, I want to get rid of this thing. Are we earnestly wanting the things of God? Are we earnestly wanting the things of the kingdom? If it does, you know what, that means that you'll pursue it at any cost. That means that you'll go after it at any cost. It doesn't matter what it takes. Amen. So are we hungering for that? And here again, he says, you know what? He says, yes. But what's his response? He doesn't say, oh, yes, 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 I want that, God. I want to be healed. He doesn't say that. What does he say? He comes with an excuse. Oh, yes, Lord, I want to to get to know you more. But you know what? My wife, she just, wait a minute. No. It's you and God. See, our desire says, you know what, I don't care what's going on. I want this. If You know what, I'm not going to let nobody get in the way, in other words, of what God has called me to do or what I'm hungry and after. Nothing's going to get in my way. Amen? So again, I said this a while ago, but our speech has to, and, and how we spend our time should line up with what we are desiring. Amen? We need to have a desire for change. How many want change here? Um, those that are watching, how many want, need change in your life? Amen. Do we desire it enough to bring breakthrough in our lives, to do whatever it takes to speak, aligning with heaven, to do, to pray, and to declare over us, even when it doesn't look like it, doesn't look like it should? Amen. Are we desiring change? In other words, are we really wanting change? Are we serious about it? So in other words, so what, it, because you know what? When we desire something, when we desire to chase after the things of God, guess what? The enemy comes in. Well, I don't, I don't feel like dealing with that. The enemy, not, I, don't, I don't want to scare nobody here, but you know what? When we press in or we begin to move forward in the things of God, the enemy steps in and he wants to push us back. But it's how we react to that that shows us if we are desiring or if we're just wishing. 
Amen? I'm not sure if I can fit this in here in this sermon this morning, in this word. But I want, I want to show you something about the way God thinks about you. In Jeremiah 1.5. And then I'll, I'll go on some other stuff in a minute. But Jeremiah 1.5 says this. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And approved of you as my chosen instrument. And before you were born, I separated you and set you apart, consecrating you and appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Before I formed you, and the word formed there means to fashion, that he framed us, he molded us, just like a potter does, right? To his, by squeezing into shape. See, be, even before he knew us, he was already thinking about us. That tells me how much God loves me. That tells me that, what, that whatever we go through, God is not there to help. That whatever we're dealing with, that God is not there to deliver us. If he took the time out, you know what? Terry. He's molding, he's creating, and he's putting in, and his destiny and purpose. He's doing all these things. I'll call him Terry. That tells me something about our God. Then he goes over here. Daniel. He's squeezing, he's molding, he's shaping, and he's doing all of these things here. And he's releasing purpose, and he's putting in, putting in destiny. He's doing all of these things. That tells me that whenever he releases us out to, to do what we're called to do, it's not just, okay, here you go, just go. No, at the same time, he's releasing provision. He's releasing a way out when the enemy attacks. Right? So when he... Even before he knew us, even before we were created in our mother's womb, he knew us. He had purposed and destined us for greatness. Amen. Say greatness. That's who you are. That's what you created to be, to be greatness. Amen. So again, he says he knew us and he approved of you as our, he approved of us as, our, as a chosen instrument. To, the word know here has been he's seen us, he distinguished us by seeing and by understanding us. In translation, this is what God gave me. God had a picture of you and of me and what we would do in the kingdom. We were just an idea. Okay, well, Felix, I call you to pastor. I call you to the nations. I call you to do this. I call you to do that. And when he released that, what was in his heart, he began to speak that into existence. And then here I am. That's true with everyone here and those that are watching. We were created for greatness, but we have to desire to step into that calling or step into what God has called or destined us to do. Amen. We have to be able to step into that. So God had a picture of you and of me and our purpose, what we're doing in the kingdom, and begin to sp he spoke it and he released it into the atmosphere. And guess what? That's how we came. Amen. But we have to desire to pursue that. We have to desire to want the very thing God has called us to do. Desire. Are we longing for that? Are we hungering for that? Amen. So we need to desire to be made whole, to be made complete. And for me, that is, you know what, is to walk in the fullness that God has called me to walk in. We have to desire to walk in everything that God has purposed us to do. That should be our desire. We have to have right desires. You know that scripture that talks about, you know what, God will give you the desires of your heart. You know what, and everybody says, well, I want that, I want that, then God will give me that out there. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about, you know, he's talking about heavenly desires. Amen. Because sometimes there's things, how many, how many of them know that? That we desire some things that they're not, they're not beneficial, right? I think it's, I wrote it down somewhere here, Proverbs 14, 12. It says, that way is which seems right, right to a man leads to the way of death. Amen? So thank God for, for, for the Holy Spirit that leads us. Amen? So our desire for change is what pushes us into what God has for us. Purpose has been released. The road has been paved. Now we have to begin to walk in that. 
We have the desire to be on the road that God has created us to walk on. Amen? Are we getting something that this morning? Are we ready to do what it takes? Are we ready to press in? Are we ready to step in? Because you know what? Once we begin to step in and begin to press in and, and walk into what God has called us, you know what? He begins to equip us. I'll give you a quick little story about me. You might, might not be able to tell now, but when I first started, when God called me to minister, I used to stutter real bad. Can you tell? Okay, good. I used to stutter real bad. Honestly, I used to get up there, and I'd begin to, I'd begin to stutter real bad or just talk too fast. And my wife, she'll tell you. And because of that there, the enemy used that right there, and he would always, always remind me of that. He would always remind me because when I would get off the platform, people would tell me, and they would begin to ridicule how I spoke and because I did all these things. But my heart was, Lord, I want to do what you call me to do in spite of what I'm dealing with. See, at that moment, I had a, my desire to do the things God has called me was greater than what I was facing, greater than me stuttering, greater than me talking too fast, greater than getting ridiculed because I spoke too fast, I did whatever. See, but at that moment, I had to, I had to decide something. If God has called me to do this, then he will heal me or deliver me of this or whatever, you know what I'm saying, whatever it takes. You know, and in time, I got up there time and time after again. I got up there, I got up there, I did it, I did it, I did it. You know, and I, and I began to, you know what? No, you be quiet, mind. Be quiet. Be quiet. Because my desire, my purpose on this earth is greater than that opposition that I'm trying to throw at me. And, I, and I, like I said, I, I, honestly, I think I dealt with that for maybe a year or two years. And every time I got up here, it was a struggle. Oh, man, I hate to get up here. Not because I was doing this, but because of me and the natural, because of what I was dealing with. But what if, say what if, what if I would have allowed me, my fear to stop me from doing what God had called me to do? See, each one of us face something, but our desire has to be greater than what you're dealing with. Our de your desire has to, be go, has to go beyond. Your fear has to go beyond your, your lack of whatever it is that you think you're missing. See, but for me, what happened is, you know what, I began to say, you know what, Lord, Holy Spirit, you take over. You begin to speak through me. You begin to speak and to declare your word. You know what, and, it, and like I said, I did that for about a year or two, but then, honestly, I don't even remember when it stopped. Because I was so caught up in the atmosphere, I was so caught up in doing the business of my king. See, we cannot focus on our shortcomings. We cannot focus on what we don't have. or all. We can't focus on that. Our focus should be, Lord, you work through me. You speak through me. You pray through me. Whatever it is, we have to do everything under the direction and the anointing of the Spirit of God. And that will break every hold. That broke, that's what broke off of me that day. But my desire was greater than the plan of the enemy. My desire to honor my king to be used, well, like I said here a while ago, to be that chosen instrument, to be that chosen vessel, to be that instrument that God will use to sound a voice today here in Emergent Streams in Stryker, Ohio, to declare the goodness of God, to declare that you too can be what God has called you if you have a desire and a hunger for the things of God. Amen. And those that are watching, I just speak right now, Father God, that you would begin to break, Father God, every hold, everything that the enemy is trying to come against your people right now, Father God. We break those chains right now in Jesus' name. We declare right now freedom. We declare right now, Father God, the fullness of your spirit be released in this place. And even those that are watching right now, Father God, see, our desire has to be greater than our opposition. Amen. How many need that this morning to know that you know what? That if a desire is, our desire is greater than that, we can overcome. Amen? So I ask you this morning, are you desiring to step in the fullness? Are you desiring 
desiring to step into all that God has for you? What about those that are watching? Are you desiring, are you hungering to walk in what God has called you to do? To be in the will of God, amen? Are we desiring the right things? Are we desiring the right things is one question this morning. Because whatever we desire, we pursue. But see, not all things that we desire are, are the things of God. I seen a picture, and it's like this here. I seen a picture on Facebook. It was in a while back. And I'm not, I don't know if I get it right or not, but you'll, you'll see the picture when I see, say it. There was this, at the end of the cliff, at the end of a cliff, right? And somebody throws something. I'm going to just say frisbee, okay, just to get the picture across. There's a dog, and he runs after that, after that frisbee. But the cliff's right here. He's ch- all, all he's focused on is that frisbee. He doesn't see what's ahead of him. See, we have to be, watch, be careful and watch what we're desiring because we don't know where those things will lead. Are we desi- and when the things that are we desiring, is it of our natural man or of the spiritual man? Are we desiring the things from within here or from within here? Amen? Our desires have to go beyond, uh, beyond us. Our desires have to go beyond us. Our desires have to be, you know, what ones that impact the people around us, impact the world, impact the kingdom, to move forward, to advance the kingdom. Amen? We need to set our hearts towards heaven and desire what heaven is releasing. Revelation, gifts, and teachings. Because heaven is always speaking. Heaven is always declaring something. You know what? And if, and if we set our hearts and desire to, to hunger after what heaven is releasing, we can get a hold of that right there. And you know what? And that whatever we're lacking, whatever we're dealing with, if we were just to get a hold of what heaven is releasing and take that there, you'll see how it will change everything around you and how you see things. Amen? In 1 Corinthians 2, 14, it says, 14 through 16, it talks about, it says, you know what? That the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Let me, I'm going to read that out of Amplified there. Just go to 1 Corinthians 2, 14. 1 Corinthians 2, 14. I got some little stickies on here in my Bible, so I don't know how to find it a little quicker instead of being running back and forth and all of that. Amen. Thank God for those things. 2 Corinthians 2.14 says this. I'm going to read verses 14 through 16. It says, But the natural, the non-spiritual man does not accept or welcome or admit into his heart the gifts and the teachings and the revelations of the Spirit of God, for they are meaningless nonsense to him, and he is incapable of knowing them or recognizing or understanding or becoming better acquainted with them because they are spiritually discerned and, estimate, and estimated and appreciated but the spiritual man tries all things and examines and investigates, inquires into question and discern all things. Verse 16, for who has known or understood the mind, the counsels and the purposes of the Lord so as to guide and to instruct him and give him knowledge. But we have the mind of Christ, the Messiah, and do hold the thoughts and the feelings and the purposes of his heart. That's why we have to be led by our spirit, man, and desire the things of the kingdom because you know what? Then God will begin to instruct us as our heart is leaning towards heaven, as our heart is wanting or or desiring the things of heaven, then he will begin to show us those things by the spirit. Because you know what? It says here, our natural mind or our natural mind won't understand that God can speak something that will bring breakthrough. But if we try to understand it with our mind, our natural man, it won't do anything because our our natural or our flesh is nonsense. See, they have to be discerned. They have to be understood by our spirit, man. And each one of us, we have that there inside, right? And he's the one that begins to guide and teaches that right there. Because that's, that's why you can get a, receive a word, release a word to somebody, and it'll bring breakthrough if it's being uh, reached or being listened by the spirit, man. Amen? Are we getting something this morning? All right. Kind of warm up here this morning. You gotta forgive me for that right there. If we begin to desire 
spiritual things and get a hold of that, then the natural will come. If we begin to desire the, the spiritual things, see, it's, it's not about, it's not about desire, you know what, I'm going to use an example here. It's not about desiring, about, you know, okay, well, you know, we want finances, we want a great marriage, we want great children that obey and all this and that. It's not about desiring those things. It's about, you know what, if we would hear what heaven is saying, then heaven would teach us. Heaven would show us what to do and in response to that there. Amen? Because it's not about, how, okay, having the perfect marriage. It's not about having all the money. Because you can have all of that and still be miserable and not being where you need to be. Amen? Because God is our source. Amen? Isaiah 11, 2. Let's go there. Isaiah 11, 2. Eleven two says this, And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, and the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of the fear, of, <clears throat> the spirit of knowledge and of the reverential and obedience, fear of the Lord. Now, I'm, I wanna, what I want to do this morning, just real quick, because I like to do word studies. You know, I like to break some stuff down, amen. And I want to share with you with that this morning, just real quick in here in Isaiah 11, 2. It says, and the spirit of the Lord ha- shall rest upon him. And the word spirit here means the wind, the breath, the life, and the spirit of of God or the breath of heaven will rest, will settle down, will give play, will dwell among you, right? And what it does is this here, it releases wisdom, it releases skillful, it means to be, to be wise in mind, word or action or to be skilled in war. It will release, are we getting this? It will release wisdom in how to war. It would release understanding. It would release discernment, perceiving, insight, instruction, and even teach us. It would release, Spirit of God would release counsel. It would release advice, purpose, plan, and resolve. It would release might. It would release the power, the warrior, the champion within us. That's some good stuff right there. But see, it's when we're desiring the things of the kingdom, when we desire, when we set our hearts on God. Amen? That's it's what it'll do. And it, it also released the spirit of knowledge, of observation to be known. See, what we have to do, if we're desiring to know God more, if we're desiring to come in, in connection with the king, with heaven, then it, it begins to release all these things, wisdom, knowledge, understanding, all of these things that we have need of to overcome the natural. Amen? See, it's not about dealing with the natural but it's we're dealing with the spirit behind that. Amen? Let me put it this way. You can't... I don't do this. You can't deal with something in the natural without first finding out what's going on in the spirit. Let me give you, uh, let me share with you again. I'm sharing that today on me. I used to be a very angry person. Say, what? I mean, I had bitterness in my heart. I was, I was an angry man. And my wife, you know, and, and it, now it kind of, it kind of makes me cringe when my wife tells me that, that, you know, when I used to come home from work, that they would, the boys would just go to the rooms and hide because oh, daddy's home and that's it. We were going to, you know what I'm saying? That, that's, that was my attitude back then. And my wife, she's okay. She's bracing herself. You know, he's home, so I better get ready for him because you know what? That, that, was, that was my life. That's who I, who I was. And, I, and she could say, you know what? I'm gonna, Lord, I'll just pray for that, for that anger right now. I'm going to just pray, you know, Lord, please just take care of him. But you know what? What, what happened was is she began to see, and I began to see, there's something much more than just, oh, he's angry. We have to go and seek God, and he begins to show and reveal, wait a minute, we need to know why you're angry. I'm not sure why I'm, why I'm going, even going with this here, but see, we had to get to the root of the problem. See, and only God, only the Spirit of God knows what's going on on the inside of you. And until we get to that thing there, to the bottom, and begin to dig up, uproot that and dig that out, then we can get, take care of the problem. 
you know what, and, and, and honestly, you know, he began to reveal to me, you know, because I, I was like, Lord, I don't want to be this way. I don't want to be angry. I don't want to be upset. I don't want to be at them all the time. I don't, I don't like that. I don't like myself like that. Who does, right? Nobody does wants to be like that, right? But, Lord, I began to, even when I was at work, I used to drive trucks, so I would be in my truck. I would be in my truck 12 hours a day, so I put my music on. I just begin to just pray, Lord, show me why am I like this. Show me why I'm like that. And it had to do with stuff that I dealt with when I was a child that, went, that I went through when I was a child. And I had to forgive some people and all these things. See, not knowing that it, that it was built up because of that there, that I never released it back then because I was a child or whatever, and I held on to that. And then from there, it went on year after year. I began to take stuff in, and instead of releasing it, I began to hold it in, hold it in. And then, you know what, when it came to my family, then I would explode on them. What I felt back then. But see, I desire to change. I had the desire, Lord, I don't want to be that person anymore. That's not who you call me to be. And what my wife did, she began to declare over me what God has said about me. She didn't sit there and she didn't argue with me. She didn't say, yeah, you know what, you ain't no good. This is not no. You know what she said? You are a mighty man of God. In other words, she's seen beyond my anger. She's seen inside of me my purpose and my destiny. And then every time she spoke that over me and declared that over me, she began to release and pull that out of me. That's what we have to be at. Not just with our families, with anybody we come in contact with, even people like that that don't know God, we have to begin to pull on what God has purposed them to do, not on the outward appearance. I'm not sure where that came from, but I hope that helped somebody because that helped me this morning to release some stuff, right? But God is good, amen? Let me see if I can get back on track here. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Decision. Man, I barely got through with desire. Decision. The decision we make becomes the bits in our mouth. James 3, 3 says this, Behold, we put bits in a horse's mouth that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body with that one bit. See, the decision that we make will lead us to where we go. If we want to be what God has called us to be, if we want to be the men and women of God that God called us to be, then we have to let, allow our decisions to lead us to that place. Because you know what, it's not just, it's not good enough to say, oh, Lord, I wish I could be there. We've all said that, right? Lord, I wish I was just there already where you were at, where you wanted me. I wish I was there walking in the fullness. But you know what, the process, we cannot do away with the process because the process, what it does, it creates character in you and it shows you who you are in the midst of going through some stuff and getting to the place that God has called you to be. Amen. See, so the decision that we make becomes the bits in our mouth that will turn us. So if we decide not to walk in that, then it'll, it'll lead us away from the things of God. Why? Because we've made the decision that, you know what, that this, what God has called me is not worthy of my time or that what God has called me to do, I can't do that. See, we already decided for, for, for God that, you know what, I can't do this, that you, you don't know what you're doing. Because when God called me to minister, I'm like, wait a minute, what are you talking about? Me? Who am I? I can't even put a, a, a sentence together, Lord, and you want me to minister? But I had to decide at that moment that God knew what he was doing, and you know what, and I, like I said, I went, I went at it, afraid. I'll be honest, I was afraid. Every time I got up there, I'm like, I was no good at speaking in front of people. Even when, even when I was back in school, that we would do book reports and all that, I'd be terrified. I said, either you get up there, you make a zero. I said, well, put that zero down. I ain't getting up there. That's how fearful I was. I know I'm the only one that dealt with fear. But see, that was opposition to stop me. That's opposition to stop you from walking in the fullness. Because the enemy understands something, that when you begin to walk in the fullness of what God has for you, everything begins to line up. Everything around you, everything about you begins to line up. Your children, your marriage, your provision, your family, everything. Why? Because you're walking the road that God has called you to walk in. Because God never, he never releases you to do something. It's okay, now you know what? Now you deal with that and you come about and you bring in the finances to do what you need to do, what I call you to do. No. When, again, when he releases you purpose and destiny, he also releases not only finances, but also the word. 
Lord, what am I going to talk about every Sunday when we're pastoring in Texas? I could do maybe once every two or three months. That's, I can, okay, but every Sunday, every Wednesday, I, I don't have enough of that in my mind. He says, well, that's good. Speak out of your heart. Okay, you know what you're doing, God. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to step back. Okay, here I go, Lord. I, mean, I hope it makes sense, God. I hope, it, I hope they, 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 they approve of it. You know, just all these things become in my mind. But the moment I get back here and begin to declare and say, Lord, you were right. But I had to make a decision. Amen. And that decision led me to where I'm at. That decision led each one of you where you're at today. We have to decide to come here this morning, right? We have to decide, you know what, to, to give our lives over to God. We have to decide, you know what, that I want more of you guys. So I'm going to be here this morning on Sunday where I can be barbecuing it for Father's Day and doing all that. I know, I know you're thinking about that already. I know I am, right? But right now it's kingdom time. Amen. But we need to make a firm decision that we will continually seek out the Lord and all his will for us. Amen. We have to make a decision you know what? that I'm going to move forward no matter what. I don't care what comes against me. I don't care what people say. I don't care if people doubt me. I will continue to move forward in what God has called me because I'm purpose for this for such a time as this. Amen. It doesn't always look like we think it should look like. Come on, somebody. Right. But we have the truth of God in everything. Again, when God called us over here to Ohio, we had, I think we had like a two-day trip. So I'm imagining everything. Okay, Lord, you're going to do this and this and that right there. And then we get here. Wait a minute. Well, that's not what I envisioned, God. That's not what I thought was going to happen. That's not what I, I didn't think it was going to work out this way. But even in that, will we decide to even still move forward in what God has called us? Even when it doesn't look like we think it should, will we continue to move forward? We have to make that decision, amen? We have to make a decision not to quit. We have to make a decision not, not to quit, but to continually press forward. Nobody said it was going to be easy. But you will always have victory in Christ. Take a deep breath this morning. You have victory. Amen? So don't quit. Keep pressing forward. The enemy wants to show us a different picture of our lives, but God, but decide once and for all that you will look at God's picture of you. Right now, the enemy is speaking to some of you, or even those that are watching. Yeah, but look at your life now. Look at your life. Your life's in a mess right now. Look at, look, you say you serve God. You said God said, that, God said that. But look at your life right now. We have to decide, are we going to look at what we, we see now in the natural, or are we going to look at the bigger picture or what God has spoken over us? I spoke this a couple of weeks ago, you know, with me and my wife. It wasn't a very good picture. She hated me, and I hated her back. But you know what? That was the enemy's picture, not God's picture. And what I did, I began to align my speaking and what I thought and my vision with what God seen. He's seen us walking in ministry together. He's seen us ministering and doing and going to the nations together. And preaching the gospel. He's seen it. So what I had to do, I had to decide, I'm going to focus on that, God. And what happens is I begin, and I went, and I came in heaven. I begin to declare and bring back what God promised me. And this is what you see now. Is it always perfect? No. Do we argue sometimes? Yes. Right? But you know what? The vision has to stay clear. We have to decide that. Amen? God has given us the ability to stand strong against the enemy. John 10.10 10 says this, The thief comes only to steal, 
to kill and to destroy. But I, Jesus, have come that you may have life and have it in all its fullness. Who are we going to believe? What the enemy is saying or what God has promised us? We have to decide right now. You believe what God is speaking? Because whatever we, we believe, that's what we draw to ourselves. Amen? So again, he says, he has come that we may have life in all its fullness. How many here, and those that are watching, how many want all its fullness? That's, that's you know what? And we have to realize something, that we, we are already walking in it. But we have to see it with our spiritual eye. That we don't have any lack, that we're walking in peace, that we're walking in, well, it doesn't look that way. That's what, that's what, that's what the uh, enemy telling you. Amen? So we have to begin to walk and speak, amen? What God is saying here is, I have come to, you can live the life that I have promised you and called you to live. That's what God is saying in John 10, 10. I've came so that you can see the very thing that I'm releasing, the very thing that I call you to do. You know what? And you can walk in that. You can walk in the fullness. You can walk in the life that I promised you to walk in, amen? Life in general doesn't always happen the way we want it to. Stuff comes up. Things happen. But we have to decide today to keep going, to keep pressing in. You know, I mentioned this before, but, you know, when our granddaughter passed away, you know, that was a big hit to us. I, like I said, I, I shared it before, but I remember going in into the hospital and then coming out with the empty car seat. My baby stood in the, in the hospital. She was gone. At that moment, I had, I had to decide, will I press through this? Will I overcome this situation? Or will I allow this situation to take me down? See, what to understand, the enemy doesn't play fair. He hates you. He hates what's on the inside of you. And that's purpose and that's destiny. And he'll try anything. He'll try to mess up your marriage, your children, your finances, even you to get you to quit, to get you to stop. But if you decide today, if you decide right now that I will press in, even when I'm angry, even when I'm upset, even when I don't understand what's going on, God, why is my granddaughter gone? I prayed and I prayed and nothing happened. Why, why, why? At that moment, I will press in into the thing that God has called me to do. Why? Because that there is greater than what's going on around me in the natural. We have to decide that. Because remember, the only way you fail is when you quit. The only way you fail is when you stop moving forward. The only way you fail is when you stop pressing in to the very thing God has called you to do. Because the purpose God has called you to do has to be greater, has to be greater, has to be greater than what you're going through. And I stand here today and tell you that if we can do it, you can do it. Because those things that you're going through right now, those things that we're dealing, you're dealing with, that you're struggling with right now, you know what? That does not compare to the God that you serve. That is not greater than the God that you serve. I have an understanding of something right now. That when that happened to us in that hospital, God was not taken by surprise. He didn't say, oh, oh what, what, what am I going to do now? He knew that. He knew that. He knew that was going to happen. And whatever you're going through, that does not take God by surprise. And I, I, I always say this, but God is still on the throne. God still holds your life in his hand. And the situation that you're going through, the God inside of you, if you lean on him, if you rely on him, guess what? He'll pull you out of that place. But we have to decide not to stay there. We have to decide that I'm not going to camp there. I'm not going to build a campfire and just stay there the rest of my life. 
See, when that happened to us, that took some time to grieve. That was on a Sunday, but you know what? Wednesday was coming, and we can't stop churches because we're going through something. So you know what? We came in that Wednesday, and we began to declare the goodness of God, even though at that moment in the natural, I didn't see what I was praying for. Why? Because God is still the same. Amen? So we have to decide. We have to decide, amen? We have to decide to keep going. What about determination? Determination is this here. Firmness of purpose, single-mindedness, staying power, backbone, perseverance, stubbornness, single-mindedness. You know what? I'm not, okay, I'm in and I'm not in. I'm in and I'm, I'm not doing that. I'm determined to do everything. I'm stubborn about it. You can push all you want to, devil, but I'm not moving. You can, do, you can throw all kinds of stuff at me. I'm not moving. I'm not moving from the place that God has called me to do. We have to be determined because when opposition comes, it will try you. It will get right in your face. It will tell you, what are you going to do now? I'm not moving. I'm going to keep on going. Because remember, in reality, our, the purpose and the destiny, it's not about you. It's about God working through you to affect the people around you and to advance the kingdom. Amen? Are we determined to see things through no matter what? And I'm, for time's sake, in Mark 5, 25 through 34, it's about, remember about the woman with the issue of blood, right? She's pressing, and she, she didn't belong there, but she's pressing and pressing in because she knew, you know what, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know I will be made whole. See, and the word touch there means this, to fasten oneself to. In other words, if she knew, she knew, she was determined, I have to become one with the source. I have to become one with God. At that moment, so I can receive my healing. I have to become one with the healer. She didn't care that she was supposed to be there. She didn't care that she didn't belong. She didn't care that those people around watching all that. She was determined. She said, you know what? I need my healing. And I know that if I can connect with the healer, I will receive what I'm longing for. I will receive what I've been wanting for for years and years and years. See, right now God is asking you, will you become one with him? Will you attach yourself? Will you attach your heart with his and allow him to come in and bring healing and restoration right now? But we have to become one with him. We have to be determined. That I don't care what it looks like. It might take a week. It might take two weeks. It might take a year. I don't know. But I'm determined I will stay this thing through until I get what God has promised me. So we have to fix our hearts to possess the very thing God has waiting for you. We have to fix our hearts. We have to be determined. I will get what God has called me to, or gave, given me. I will receive the promises of God. I will not be moved. I don't, care what, I don't care if all heaven comes against me. I will not be moved because I know what God has spoken. I know what God is releasing, and I know what I'm entitled to as a child of God. And you know what? And don't settle for anything less than what God has called you. Don't settle for anything less than what God has promised you. And every time we begin to line up or align ourselves with the, what's going on in the natural, then we settle for the less when God has called you to be in the more. Amen? We can see and begin to walk a life of restoration and healing in every area if we stay determined. You will see that. You will begin to see God to restore and to do things if we will, be, if we will stay the course. If we will stay hooked up to the one that is our source. God is looking for people who are determined to go beyond their limitations. God is looking for people that when they think, I can't do this anymore, they say, come on, just a little further. Okay, Lord, I'll, 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 I'll preach if you want me to. Okay, if, if, you, if that's what you say, okay, I'll do it. But then he says, wait a minute, I'm going to stretch you a little bit. I want, you, I want to go beyond your limitations. I want you to go to Ohio now. Wait a minute. But you know what? In doing that, God has given me a whole new revelation of himself of me and what he's called me to do by simply saying, yes, God, I'll go.
First Corinthians 2 9 says this. I want to read that amplified. It's, it's, it's good stuff right here. First Corinthians 2 9. And it says this. But on the contrary, as the scripture says, no eye, what eye has not seen, and ear has not heard, and has not entered into the heart of man all that God has prepared, made, and keeps ready for those who love him, who hold him in affectionate reverence, promptly obeying him, and gratefully recognizing the benefits he has bestowed. See, no ear has heard or eye have seen what God has waiting, has made ready, prepared, that's stored up in heaven for you right now. Your healing, your deliverance, restoration, it's waiting for you to acknowledge it. It's waiting for you to receive it. It's waiting for you to say, Lord, that belongs to me. But we have to be determined to press in that, amen? So we can be filled and walk in all its fullness, God's plan for us. We also have to understand that walking in our purpose, we release into the lives of others. I said this a while ago, but what God has called us to do is not just for us. It's also that when we go about our day, we can begin to release to people what God is filling us with. Because John 7, 30 says this, He that believeth, who, he that commits and trusts on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly, out of his heart, shall flow, shall run rivers, the brooks. And here, and the word rivers here means this. It's a, it's a drinkable running water, water that refreshes, water that strengthens, water that brings nourishment and brings life. That's what's inside of you, that you release that. That wherever you go, though you go to people and people are dry, and places are dry, what happens, you begin to release on that right there the flow of your belly, and you begin to speak again what heaven is declaring, and you bring it to those dry places, those dry people, a refreshing water that they can drink from to restore and to heal and to uplift and to strengthen them when they feel, I can't go on anymore. That's what's inside of you. Amen? But we have to, we have to be determined for that. We have to desire and make a decision, that's who I am. When we begin to walk in the fullness of what God has called us, we, we, we carry life within us, the word, heaven, and the spirit of God and authority within us. We are carriers of glory. We do carry healing inside of us. See, what happens is, and, I, and I'll close with this here, but you know what, we, all of, whatever we have need of, we go and we look and search for it over here and search for it over here. Well, Lord, I need this and I need that. I need help here. I need help there. Not realizing that what you need is what's inside of you already stored up. What we have to do is begin to release that and declare that over us and over our families, over our children. Every, why? Because we are carriers of that. We carry the word. We carry the authority. That's who you are. That's who you are. You carry the glory. You carry the glory. Father, I just thank you this morning. I thank you, Father God. Lord, I just pray right now, first of all, those that are watching online, Father God. I just pray right now that they will get revelation of who they are, Father God. I pray right now, Father God, against every stumbling block the enemy will try to throw in their path to make them stop, Father God, to lose passion or hunger for you, Father. We come against the enemy right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I just speak your blessings over your people right now, Father God. And I just thank you right now, Father, that there'll be, Father God, just a, a spirit of expectancy in this house, Father God, for the more, Father God. I thank you that you're releasing right now, Father, even hunger. You're releasing right now, Father, even a drive to move forward and to continue to go on, Father God. And, Lord, we come against right now any discouragement, Father God, in Jesus' name. And, Lord, I begin to speak life right now, Father, to everyone here and those that are watching. I just speak life over the situations. Whatever they're dealing with right now, Father God, I call heaven right now, Father God, to release, Father God, on their behalf, Lord, what they have need of. Even here tonight in the house, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. You are so awesome, Lord. You are so awesome, Father God.